Hello and welcome back. Would you look at the state of this table? Today I want to talk about this. This is the Minis Forum AI X1. And this is one of their newest generation mini PCs with a focus on AI and mini PC gaming there, arriving with an AMD Ryzen, the 370 there, it's a Ryzen 9 um, AI um, focused CPU, again, 50 tera operations per second, also arriving with 64 gig of DDR5 memory inside there. It was quite the beast. We've already reviewed it as a mini PC. We did lots of gaming testing. We did AI testing, all of that mucking around with that co-pilot button there on the bottom. We've done the works, however, this video is what I've wanted to do more. This is about talking about it as a NAS, because this system arrives with three M.2 NVMe slots inside. It also has USB 4 on it. It also has Oculink on it. And thanks to that great CPU in there, which is a 12 core, 24 thread processor. And again, supporting up to a maximum 96 gig of memory. I'd say this has got serious NAS potential. Not just that, but when you look at Minis Forum and some of the solutions they are unveiling at CES 2025 over in Vegas, when I was there, they were talking about their new NAS solution, the N5 Pro, which arrives with the same damn CPU. That um, HX370 AMD um, Ryzen 9 is a beast of a CPU. So knowing that it's going to have the same CPU as that traditional NAS solution, I wanted to look at this as a flash NAS solution. I'm going to go through storage, I'm going to go through different factors of owning a NAS and other stuff that we learned during the PC review. But let's get started. So straight away, let's talk about the big one, storage. This system with its three of M.2 NVMEs has almost got as much M.2 NVMe flash storage as the majority of entry-level flash solutions in the market right now, from the likes of Ugreen all the way through to QNAP and Acer Store in some of their smaller, modest solutions. Now, the three M.2 slots inside this system are all Gen 4. That means at Gen 4 times 4, you're looking at a potential 7 gigabytes per second for a drive inside there. When we did our performance testing internally, using Unraid and using Terminal and SSH command line, we were able to achieve, in terms of read and write performance, between 4.5 and 5 gigabytes per second read and write. Obviously, the read was heavier. However, when we were trying to transfer data between one SSD and the other, we saw changing data between the first and second slot, performance of around 2.5 gigabytes per second. Now, although that isn't the full performance there, we have to accept that the M2 NVMEs are probably all sharing a lane there at the top. Those are still pretty impressive numbers there, transferring data from one SSD to another, when many other systems we've reviewed here on the channel that were Gen 4 M.2 NVMe lanes inside, barely gave us a gigabyte there. However, it's worth noting that of the three M.2 slots inside here, only two of them are Gen 4 times 4. The last one is Gen 4 times 1. Quick aside, if you do get this system with the one uh, TB drive included, that's one of the bundles from Minis Forum, that one TB, by the way, is in the 4 times 4 slot. It's up to you. Personally, I think it's a massive waste, but nevertheless, back to the business at hand. Now, those four drives inside, when I tested the performance of the Gen 4 times one lane inside, we achieved 1.5 to 1.6 gigabytes per second up and down. Again, very respectable and exactly what you would expect to see on a Gen 4 times one lane on a repeated one gigabyte file transfer test there. So straight away, you might be thinking, well, four M2 NVMe base, it's all right, but I'm not sure I would use that as a NAS. Well, let's stretch our muscles a bit and expand. Notwithstanding the USB ports there on the front, such as USB 4, which allow you to add external storage up to 40 gigabit per second performance, where possible, this is a three gigabits per second external SSD there. But more importantly, this has Oculink. Now, Oculink's abilities are Great. That Oculink port there on the rear there, that allows us, notwithstanding the obvious stuff, such as utilizing an external graphics card, something we may touch on later, but what it does allow us to do is attach two great little things. Number one, we can attach external PCIe adapters using Oculink. That means not only can we attach PCIe bandwidth upgrade cards, but on top of that, we can add storage upgrade cards as well. But what's really interesting is something like this. This is from Ustar, the TBS4. Now this is a four times M.2 NVMe Oculink expansion device. And we connected this to this. And just like that in Unraid, we were able to add an additional one, two, three, four 
M.2 NVMEs to our storage system. That turned this three bay system into a seven bay flash system. Now, when we tested the performance, each of these M.2 NVMEs, unfortunately, were bottlenecked down to a single speed lane there at Gen 3. We only saw around 800 to 850 megabytes per second in terms of up and down with connected drives on this. But nevertheless, that does mean that many PCs like this one that arrive with Oculink, the ability to expand your storage is not completely off the table. Next up, let's talk about network bandwidth. This system arrives with, frankly, a slightly underwhelming 2 times 2.5 gigabit Ethernet. Don't get me wrong, it's not underwhelming for a mini PC, I guess, but if you were going to utilize this as a NAS, expanding out and using perhaps that Oculink port there to add an upgraded network interface might disappoint some users there. Again, the lack of a uh, traditional PCIe upgrade slot is felt in some cases there. I will add though that this having those 3M.2 NVMe slots does at least open the door to taking advantage of things like this. This is an M.2 to 10GBE upgrade card. You could add this to this you've got 10 GBE. Or even better, if one Oculink port isn't enough and you wanted to expand other devices and you only needed two of those M.2 NVMe slots, that is where something like this, which is a PCIe M.2 NVMe, I should say, to Oculink adapter. And you can get this also to a M.2 NVMe to standard PCIe output. So you've got Oculink, you've got PCIe, and you've got 10 gig Ethernet there as well. So although the baseline 2 times 2.5 GPE on this is a little underwhelming in terms of traditional NAS utilization, there is the option to expand in a few different directions there. Again, you could apply this to a lot of general mini PCs, but it's the fact that it's got three M.2 NVMe slots out the gate means you can expand out. Hell, you could go, if you wanted to, into a SATA external card or a SATA, SATA cage box with its own power supply and then bolt on lots of storage. Look at those TerraMaster D-series devices. They're five and eight bay hybrid system, which are hard drive and NVMe combo boxes that connect by standard USB. You could add that to this and have that large archival storage running straight into those 10 gig USBs. It's also worth highlighting this arrives with Wi-Fi 7 out the gates. So you've already got a, a good six gigahertz, 320 megahertz packet connection at your disposal in terms of wireless connectivity there. Obviously the NAS software you choose to use is gonna make a huge difference. Some of the drivers uh, are available within Unraid App Center there, but not all of them. Alternatively, there are other adapters that are driver free. This is a USB to Wi-Fi 7 adapter you could add to that. There are ways and means to upgrade the network connectivity on this device i would say to ever so slightly get over the base level 2 times 2.5 gbe that this arrives with out the gate there again a lot of this kudos goes more to this side of the table to be honest than this in general but utilizing this as a nas doesn't have quite as low a glass ceiling in terms of storage upgrades and network upgrades as you might think now we've talked a little bit about internal and external file transmission there, but I will say we've got to talk about a couple of ways in which a lot of users tend to opt for mini PCs for use as servers or just general NASes. That comes down to multimedia and virtualization. Of course, there are lots of other things you could be doing, running smart home assistants and all of that that comes down into Docker. But I think we can all agree that Docker and virtualization are branches of a not dissimilar tree there. They are instances of multiple applications or operating systems all bridging on a single bare metal platform there. Now, let's tackle the virtualization one first. I was able to run 12 instances of Windows 10 utilizing a single uh, CPU thread each and two gig of memory on this system without it getting really taxed. I hope you can, you can see that there on screen. I went ahead and only assigned half of the available CPU to those 12 individual VMs, all running simultaneously. You can see them all there running in VNC, able to assign two gig to each, and the 64 gig they started with left me loads to play with there. Now, at some point, my screen recorder was one that was really putting up a struggle there, as you can see on screen, but nevertheless, that CPU really, really opens the door to a phenomenal amount of ability and those virtual and those vCPU threads on that CPU all add up to a very capable VM server here. Just keep in mind that number one, this does not support ECC memory, which may be something of a downer for those looking at this as their own new bespoke flash server with the likes of TrueNAS, Proxmox, or Unraid. And also keep in mind that the amount of memory that you utilize on this and the base level hypervisor will have its own mark. 
work there. Again, more aggressive um, virtual machine environments then ISOs and different uh, operating systems will make their mark. But I went with Windows 10 simply because it was a nice base level one that we can run the majority of apps on. And don't forget that it's not game over in terms of capability because that Oculink port once again allows you to add external graphics cards, not just Minis Forums, this is the MGA1 that we've tested already before in our review. We did a, um, a comparison of performance with ray tracing and non-ray tracing graphical capabilities and Call of Duty Warzone using this graphics card and this mini PC, and it did provide tangible, visual uh, improvements in its graphical capabilities. In the context of a NAS, of course, what that means is with this, already with a very good baseline integrated graphics, but if you want to run more aggressive virtual machines or just a small handful of power VMs for stuff like uh, remote access video editing or huge scale databases and AI running in multiple instances at once, you've got that option to scale up quite significantly and a CPU that is highly capable towards that. But when it came to Plex Media Server, I actually ran out of clients before I could really push this thing through the wall. I went ahead and installed Plex Media Server via a Docker application on Unraid from there. I went ahead and ensured that I had hardware transcoding enabled there. And I went ahead and done three individual tests. With 1080p, I went ahead and played eight different instances of 100 megabit bitrate 1080p files on this device over the local area network, heavily saturating it. And I got to a point where I overutilized the integrated graphics and moved into software transcoding, but nevertheless, it was able to support those 10 in, I'm sorry, uh, those eight individual 1080p playbacks there. And again, remember, 100, mega, uh, 100 megabit bit rate is enormous. So we moved into 4K, and with 4K, I was able to run 10 individual, individual instances of high fidelity 4K at 60 megabits per second there. Again, I got the CPU to about 80% and stopped there, but nonetheless, that is overwhelmingly positive in terms of its capability as a Plex media server. Finally, with 8 K, I was able to run four to five individual instances of a high definition 60 megabit 8K file with both native and transcoded playback there. That's when we saw that CPU get particularly egregiously oversaturated, but nonetheless, the fact that this system can stream 8 K to multiple clients at once gives you some idea of the future proofing, especially when Plex isn't really optimized for 8K yet. Now, all of this sounds unbearably positive, right? Well, let's bring ourselves down to earth. First and foremost, we have to at least acknowledge that although this has got those two USB 4 ports there, very few, and by very few, I mean practically no uh, NAS software brand has been able to really integrate USB 4 directly point to point there. You're not gonna be able to run a Thunderbolt or USB 4 client system and directly connect cable to cable on this within the NAS software. Just um, Thunderbolt over IP or IP over Thunderbolt is just not as open-ended right now. And there are brands like QNAP and Asus door to a lesser extent and Zimmercube that have integrated to a greater or lesser extent network over IP protocol to directly connect to their device, removing the switch and also having that 40 gigabit connection there. Unfortunately, that is just not something I could get working on this at all in the third party OSs that I was trying to use. Perhaps if I'd gone ahead and installed a uh, Casa or Zimmer OS, I know the Zimmer OS is very tailored towards the Zimmer Cube. On top of that, it's worth highlighting all of this AI button crap, none of that seemed to work at all, and I don't think you want it to in a network attached storage environment, as was when we were using the fingerprint locker there. I couldn't really get much of that to work at all. So those kind of arguably more fad elements to this device aren't really attainable in the NAD spectrum. So none of that is gonna transfer over if you choose to use this as a private server. Uh, another thing to highlight, again, we talked about USB 4 drives and the performance we could get via those. We can't utilize that USB port and client devices such as a Thunderbolt to um, Thunderbolt to 10 GBE adapter externally, I still couldn't get this to work. Again, driver utilization and investigations on GitHub are happening. The problem is they haven't achieved success yet. And therefore, if those elements interest you and the fact of getting a mini PC and using it as a NAS with USB 4 and Oculin is a 
big part of why you're considering this, I do not recommend this for that. In practically every other regard, in its expandability and its internal capabilities of virtual machine utilization, its Plex Media server deployment, and its storage scalability, I can recommend this quite a lot as a network attached storage solution. But don't go for this for any kind of baseline uh, network ports, baseline uh, external connectivity ports, aside from Oculink. It is a good NAS system. And more importantly, more than anything else in this video, I am very chuffed that a Minis Forum have opted for that particular processor in their N5 Pro. It will make it one of the most powerful five bay NAS solutions in the market right now. What I want is that CPU in a bigger NAS and they're about to deliver that. But fingers crossed we see it later this year because we've only seen it at that trade show and at the time of recording, I'm wondering where it is. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, if you have, let me know in the comments. If there are other tests or other mini PCs that you'd like to see used in the world of network attached storage, do let me know. And do stay tuned for when the Minis Forum N5 Pro review goes live. Again, when it happens, I'll let you know in advance. But thank you so much for watching. There's links in the description to both the written review for this, the full video review, and links to get hold of one of these for yourself. So if you are interested in that and you have found this video useful and you were going to go to those sites listed below, make sure those three things are true. If they are, use the links in the description. Me and Eddie, just us here at NAS Compares, get a small fee, a little commission based on what you do, and it helps us keep doing what we do. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.